I had a dream about when I was young. A dream of back around the time when my childhood friend moved away. You shouldn't cry, even if I move away, okay? If anything, it will be more peaceful. What did you just say? Nothing. Although still an elementary school student, my childhood friend was called the Ogre Mirai Kida. She was tall for an elementary school girl. She was strong and energetic. Of course, everyone around her was scared of her. I, on the other hand, was a frail, weak boy. I often became a target of attack, but because Mirai was always next to me, I was able to spend a peaceful childhood without being bullied. But Mirai dragged me around everywhere as her servant. So being with her might have had as many disadvantages as advantages. Come to think of it, before Mirai moved away, I think I made a promise with her? Write your name over here and wait for the time. What? No, I don't wanna! Huh? <laughs> Are you saying you can't make a promise with me? Okay. I'll write it. After I signed it, I think I also put my seal on it. I hope she didn't sign me up for something fishy. Thanks, Shinichiro. Don't ever forget about me, okay? I remember her looking extremely happy, but unfortunately, my dream ended there. I've been thinking about that dream since morning. I wonder why I suddenly dreamt about that right now. But just a few minutes later, I experienced something that proved that destiny really existed. Ahem. I would like to introduce a transfer student. Miss Kida, go ahead. My name is Mirai Kida. Nice to meet you. I'm the childhood friend of Shinchiro Kago over there. Huh? What's this? A sequel to my dream? I tried pinching my cheeks, but it hurt. So with that, I reunited with my childhood friend. Oh, you used to live in the United States? Wow, you're an international student! But I went to a Japanese school there, so I'm not so good at English. Hey, do you have a boyfriend abroad or something? What? No, no. By the way, does my childhood friend have a girlfriend? Am I allowed to go talk to him? Ah, <laughs> uh, Kago? Oh, he's quite handsome, but I feel sorry for him. Huh? Sorry? I mean, he's handsome and tall and nice, but he only likes anime characters. Uh, unfortunately, I heard some girls confess their love to him not knowing about that, and he turned down every one of them. Oh, uh, I see. Anime. What does that mean? C calm down. It's just that my childhood friend moved here. I'm sure she forgot all about me, too. I remember our parents were friends, so she probably only heard that I'm in the same high school. But she's become really cute, huh? Hey, no, no, no. She's the ogre. If I let my guard down, she'll beat me up for sure. Besides, I already have Kirari-chan. <laughs> She's cute, lovable, a hard worker, and the younger sister type. The magical girl Kirari-chan. Although they finished airing the series, there still exist many fans of the anime's heroine. For some reason, I fell in love with the anime when I was in elementary school, and I became a high school student without losing the passion. I know people around me don't understand me, but everything is fine as long as I have Kirari-chan with me. After all, School ended, and I headed home without talking to Mirai once. She was so popular she didn't have the time. Because I was feeling a little hazy inside, I went to the bookstore and anime shop to unwind. It was soon nighttime. Hmm, come to think of it, I wonder where Mirai lives. She used to live in the house next to mine, but since the landlord passed away a few years ago, the house was broken down, and it was now a parking lot. Well... Guess it's nothing I have to worry about. I'm home! Welcome back! Yeah, thanks. What?! Why are you here?! Oh, this must be a dream! Oh, it's relieving to see you're still you. <laughs> you haven't changed, huh? No, really, why is she here?! Welcome back, Shin. You were late, huh? Your father drank too much alcohol because Mirai was serving him. He probably won't wake up until tomorrow morning. But I wanted to see your surprised face, so I didn't drink a sip of alcohol. But of course you'd be surprised to see your childhood friend living under the same roof as yours. 
Isn't this just exciting? Totally amazing! So I kept this a secret until today so that I can surprise you! So, to make things short, Mirai is going to live here from today on. Her parents are still in America. Oh, surprised. You must be. Oh, how fun it was. Did you notice I hid a camera in the entrance? <laughs> I filmed your surprise face. Okay then, mommy's satisfied, so I'm going to go take a shower. The party's over. I don't understand, even after the explanation. To explain, I'm your future wife. Living together is just to get ready for our marriage. That's what it is. My future wife? I don't understand. Yep, I'm going to be your wife in the future, Shinichiro. See, this is the proof. A marriage certificate? Oh! I, I remember now. What I signed back then was a marriage certificate. Ah! Sorry, let me cool off. No can do, sorry. I'll do anything, so, so please give that back. I will, after we get married. So I can't escape this, huh? Oh, that was fun. <laughs> How excited I was for today. Anyway, so that's what it is. Hope we do well together from now on, Shinichiro. It wasn't fun for me. What was that? Nothing. Uh, how fun. No, the growth I went through, it's all getting canceled because she's here. As I talked with Mirai, I started to remember the promises we made back then. When we grow up, we're going to get married, okay? Here, sign this. And this one, too. Uh, I get no say? And so I signed the papers. Hmm. Something is off, though. But I couldn't remember anything more than that. <sighs> what a day. I'd understand if my childhood friend just simply moved back to the neighborhood, but who would have thought she will start living here? She did change visually, but she's the same as when she was a kid, both in a good and bad way. I couldn't help but laugh. Oh well, guess I just have to accept it. Mirai was the type of person who hated twisting things. I'm sure nothing bad will happen. <laughs> What should I do? He became so hot. I've loved him for a long time. Oh my, I mean, mine and mine only, Shinichiro. I know we made a promise, but I, I really did tell him we're getting married. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. Huh, I did a good job today. He doesn't have a girlfriend, apparently. Good, but... Mm. Apparently, my enemy of love was an anime character. An anime character? How should I beat that? Wake up, big brother! Wake up! It's morning! 7 a.m. in the morning. My morning starts with Kirari-chan's voice telling me to wake up. Ah, uh, Kirari-chan's voice is so soothing. Hmm? What's this? Something's inside my futon? Wake up! Huh? Big brother! Oh, it's a dream. It's not a freaking dream! Wake up! It, is this my reality? I didn't think my childhood friend would be in the same bed as mine in the morning. And I feel something very soft on my back. This won't bother me. Oh, aren't you bright red, Shinichiro? Oh, why? I see you're not used to girls, are you? Sh shut up! Besides, my brain isn't keeping up with the fact that you're going to be living with me, and yet you're in my bed? Of course I'll be confused! Too many incidents at once, and yes, I'm not used to girls! Okay, okay, well, breakfast is ready, so come downstairs, okay? Mrs. Kago went for a morning walk because I told her I'll make breakfast. How is it? Good? It's great! What a surprise! She definitely looks like the type who can't cook, but... It's a perfect Japanese meal, too. I can't believe she used to live abroad. Here you go, darling. <coughs> oh, gross. Are you practicing spitting soup out of your mouth? Why would I practice that? Don't say anything weird. 
What? But I'm practicing for our marriage. Nothing's weird, is it? Wait, but marriage? You weren't serious yesterday, were you? Huh? Y you don't want to get married to me? You'd rather marry an anime character? It kind of looked like Mirai's eyes were wet. Maybe I hurt her? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it that way. I do think you became cute, but marriage is... <laughs> huh? You don't have to panic that much. Man, you really don't change, Shinichiro. Shut up! I'm going to school! All that worrying for nothing. Oh, I just need to get this done. I'll definitely win this. I wonder what kind of girl Shinichiro likes. I should try different things. Mirai was always surrounded by people, and there was no space for me to go to talk to her. Well, I guess there's no reason to talk to her at school, but still... I'm surprised she had that marriage certificate from when we were kids. She's been persistent about it as if it was a joke, too. She's not serious. Is she? Of course not. I'll go have lunch. I always ate lunch alone at the school cafeteria. I didn't consider myself a loner, but I guess I was one from a third-person point of view. Mirai, on the other hand, had always been surrounded by people since we were young. Hey, Shinichiro! Let's eat lunch together! I made some! What? You made lunch? That'll be one thousand dollars! That's too expensive! My back was against something soft again! A thousand dollars, huh? I told you I'll feed you. Why do you refuse? I'll definitely eat by myself. If someone sees the scene, I'll definitely make enemies in the school. Hmm... That was when I heard a sound. Oh! My chopsticks fell. <laughs> what kind of position is that? The practice of spitting out food suddenly bore fruit right now? Hmm... Where did it go? No, really. Where did it go? I think I threw it too far. What do you mean you threw it? What bad manners to throw chopsticks during lunch? No, I mean, she's sticking her buttocks out. I can see more than I should. Ah, you saw it right now, didn't you? Saw what, ma'am? I called her ma'am. You saw my skirt, didn't you? Nada, I no see. I sound like a foreigner. Oh, found my chopsticks. You should wash them. Nah, don't use them anymore. They're probably too dirty. She had this rough side of her since a long time ago. Huh. I was always being dragged around by her. How nostalgic. Why are you grinning? Did you take a picture by any chance? Of course not! I was just thinking about before! Before as in when we were children? Yeah, I mean, many things happened, but it was fun after all. That's what I was thinking. After all, there wasn't a time I forgot about Mirai. I tried very hard today. Good job, me! I think it was risky to show him up my skirt, but I have to do at least that much to beat an anime character. Besides, if it's Shinichiro, it makes me happy to think he saw it. Am I kind of weird? But... It seemed that he's forgotten after all. Shinichiro didn't remember about the marriage notification nor about our promise. He started to remember about the marriage notification after I told him about it. But what about the promise? It'll be scary if he really forgot about it. I wouldn't want that to happen. When I finally met him, I, I don't want to be disappointed. I don't even want to think about it anymore. Um... <sighs> How wonderful it is to watch anime in the bath. Waterproof phones are the best. I'm not doing this because I want to forget about the scene I saw this afternoon under Mirai's skirt. Hmm? The door to Mirai's room is open. Is she asleep? Hey, Mirai? Wow, she's sleeping with her stomach out. Very much like an anime character. I remember she moved around a lot when she sleeps. I'll cover her. Hmm? What's this paper? A marriage certificate and... A promise. Ah, this is... That's right. I remembered. And sign this one, too. Huh? What's next? 
<laughs> Remember, you told me that you liked me the other day. Huh? Um, yeah. She's rough and wild, but she's fun to be with, and I love her as a friend. She's like my security guard when I'm with her, and that was also one reason why I liked her. The truth is, I like you too, Shinichiro. Oh, really? Well, of course. We're friends. Uh, that means I love you. Hmm. Wha what? Love? Like is it romance? So it's a promise. We both like each other, so we'll get married, and I'll definitely come back so we can. So you can't fall in love with another girl until then, okay? It's so long. I can't remember that. <laughs> you can't be helped, huh, Shinichiro? Well, don't worry. You just sign the papers and don't forget about me, okay? I think I got it. Maybe. And so I signed the papers and put the short promise in my heart. But a child's memory is very unreliable. Right, I remember it. That's right. That's what it was. It was after that. I was scared that I was forgetting about Mirai little by little after she moved away. The memory I had of her face was getting blurry. Even when I saw her pictures, I couldn't remember her voice. So when I found an anime character very much like Mirai, I became so happy. I thought that if I continued liking this character, I would be able to keep my promise with Mirai. The problem was that the anime was too entertaining and that the protagonist's personality was the opposite of Mirai's. As a result, I started hallucinating that I was in love with the character herself, and not Mirai. When I think about that, Mirai really became cute, huh? She really looks like Hirari-chan. Dang, now that I remember the feelings I had before, my heart is thumping like crazy! This isn't good. It's ten times more embarrassing now than when looking at Kirari-chan in the eye! Shinichiro, what's wrong? Nothing. No, I can tell. You've been acting weird. Not at all! What should I do? The normal things don't feel normal anymore! Shinichiro, let's eat lunch! Nah, I'll go to the cafeteria alone. Hey, wait! This isn't good. I keep thinking about things after that, and I can't face her properly! Chirichiro, let's go home together! We live in the same house anyway! Sorry, I want to stop by at the anime shop, so... Uh, hey! Shinichiro! And like that, I continued avoiding Mirai. After all, I went out for dinner too. And Mom warns me about this on chat. Everything's not working right. I'll just take a shower and go to bed. Of course, so that I won't have to face Mirai. What? Welcome back. Thanks. Uh, I really can't look her in the eye. Why are you avoiding me? Huh? Um, um... You hate me that much now? You like an anime that much more than me? That's not what it is. If you don't like me, just tell me! Don't avoid me, it makes me sad! Even an ogre cries. Tears were dropping down Mirai's cheeks. No, Mirai is not an ogre. Of course I knew that. Mirai has always been a girl who hates being alone and is bad at showing her true feelings. I'm sorry, it's not that. I just became embarrassed. Huh? Embarrassed? Um, I remembered about the promise we made a long time ago. The promise to like you forever. Oh, really? Yeah, that's why I started feeling embarrassed. Sorry. <laughs> no way, Shinichiro, you like me? And since a long time ago? Huh? That's... Nah, I knew very well that that was true, and it was true that I was getting irritated by Mirai's attitude. She'd always messed with me since a long time ago. Maybe it's my time to get back at her. But now I've got Kirari-chan. You should be more lovable like her. Then I'll think about our relationship. Huh? There's no way I'll lose to an anime character! The truth was that I only liked this anime character so that I wouldn't forget about her. I shouldn't tell her though. You know, you can't do things like this with an anime girl. You can't see it like this either. Wait, wait, wait! What kind of rivalry does she have? I'll do it! I really will! 
Stop! Okay, I got it! Stop! I really will do it! Go! What the hell are you doing? Shut up! Do more! What is she saying? My life with my childhood friend that suddenly began... It was a racket! With loads of commotion! Will there really come a day we get married? Well, either way, I decided not to think about it right now. Or else I wouldn't be able to look at her face out of embarrassment. Of course, until that day comes, I will never tell Mirai about this. High school. It's a wonderful place to make the fullest of your prime days. Having a part-time job, and don't forget going out after school with the friends you make, you make the best memories. Or so they say. I, on the other hand, we've only just started school, and I've already found myself sitting on a powder keg. What's going on? You're a guy. You want to be our manager? Ugh, look at him. He's a typical loser. Don't you dare try to take pictures of us changing. Wait, who are you anyways? My name is Yoshitsune Chikage. Who is it? I've never heard of that name before. Hey, why would someone like you want to be our manager? Hey, don't be teasing the new kid. Captain, well, I mean... You know this is precious practice time. Don't waste it chatting around. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry for that. My teammates weren't on their best behavior, were they? It's okay. Wow, she's pretty. My name is Mirai Hanyu. You want to join the team as our manager? Uh, no. Nobody wants me here. I'll be leaving. W wait wait It's gonna be okay. Nobody is hating on you or anything. No, they just said- Don't worry about it. I'm sure they were just blushing over you because you're a guy. Seriously, it wasn't like that at all. Are you okay with it? Don't you want a better looking manager? I'm actually glad it's you. We have other managers, but since you're a guy, you'll be helping us out with the heavy lifting. Heavy lifting? Oh, no, it'll be okay. You'll do great. Uh, thank you very much? She feels so bad for me. She's comforting me. But why is she trying so hard to keep me on the team? Um... I'm sorry, I know I'm late. Hikari! As I was about to ask the captain a question, Hikari, my childhood friend, came barging in and interrupted me. Hey! Yoshi! Why did you leave me behind? I told you to wait for me! Uh, um... I was embarrassed. And don't call me Yoshi! Embarrassed about what? Take it easy, guys. Calm yourselves. So, are you Hikari Tendo from Chigusa Middle School? Yes, ma'am. Oh my gosh, it's Hikari Tendo. Apparently, she was the reason Chigusa Middle School was able to get into the finals. Ow! Why did you come to such a mediocre school like ours? I'm sure there are a lot of offers from stronger schools. Don't I deserve an apology? Okay, guys, cut it out now. We have a lot of new members. Let's all make a fool out of ourselves. Many of the team members were getting out of control, so Mirai, the captain, stepped in to calm everyone. I knew this would happen, but seeing the difference between the way they treat me and how they treat Hikari... They treat Hikari like she's some sort of celebrity. I really don't like these people. Yeah, I think I should leave now. Oh, wait a minute. Where are you going? I want to go home. That's not gonna happen. No, you know I'm not meant to be here. Hey, Yoshi! You can't leave now! You promised you would be our manager! Ugh! Damn, she found me. I won't be able to leave now. Wait, Hikari, you know that guy? Yep, he's my childhood friend. And, you know, Yoshi is actually... Hey, don't say another word. Y yoshi Jeez, take a chill pill. He gets on my nerves. Huh? Hey, hey, hey. Let's just get started on our warm-ups then, alright? Um, okay. Yoshitsune, how about you watch over us while we're practicing? I'll show you around and teach you everything when we have spare time. Okay. <laughs> Yoshi, don't leave, okay? Don't back out on me, please! I won't. They told me to watch from the sidelines, so I sat down next to a manager who was a grade above mine. Hikari and I checked out a lot of schools last year, and this was the school which appealed to us the most. 
You could tell by the way they run that they were taught very well, and they practice hard. But they're not really good people. I had heard some rumors about the team, so I had come to check it out because I was worried. But I guess I had nothing to worry about. Hmm. What? The way you're looking at them practicing is really intense. You're kinda creepy. I really want to go home. I not only creep out the players, but the manager was scared of me now. This went on every day. They continued to treat me like I was some sort of creep. A few weeks had passed, and I was feeling miserable inside and out. <sighs> hey, you don't have to be so sad. Come on, they're so horrible to me. I'm not some sort of germ, you know. Hey, don't let it get to you. They're just irritated because of their situation. Their coach was transferred to a different school. They're still adjusting to the new one. I know they're on edge. They came here because the coach was good, but now he's gone and they're feeling uneasy. But that doesn't give them the right to treat me like a punching bag. I mean, I don't see you taking out your anger like they are on anybody else. But, but they're all working really hard despite their hardships. And the captain is really sweet, right? Yeah, the captain is actually really nice. She's also very pretty. Compared to all the other ogres, she looks like an angel. <laughs> Why are you pouting, Hikari? Nothing. Okay, then... Anyways, judging by the way the team is now, we're gonna have a tough time at the preliminaries next week. Oh, you think so too? We're going up against last year's champion, Tenno Academy, and Ikeboshi Girls High School, who's really strong. I know they're both really good. We don't stand a chance. The only players good enough to play against them are you and the captain. Seriously, you should have accepted the offers from a stronger team. But then, we wouldn't be able to attend the same school. Why is that at the top of your list? You should be more concerned about your future. Don't waste your talent. Mm, don't get me wrong. I really thought this was the best path for me to take as a volleyball player. I know I'll make it through to the national competition. Nationals, huh? You don't think I'll make it? No, not if the team stays this way. Hey, don't say mean things like that. Don't hit me! I'm not saying we suck or anything. But you said we won't make it. I just meant that there's need for growth. So, if we get better, we'll go to the Nationals? We have a good chance, I think. I don't know if we can beat the champions, but we'll be able to beat Akeboshi Girls High School. But that's only if they're willing to change. I'm not going to do anything about it unless they bow down and apologize to me. I know holding grudges isn't the best thing to do, but that's what was going through my mind. Shortly after, the preliminaries for the national competition started, thanks to Hikari, who had experience in competitions, and the captain, who was already famous for her strong skills, our team was doing great in the tournament. And finally, our game with Akeboshi Girls High School started. Akeboshi and Yuka is going at it in court B. Hmm, who do you think will win? Akeboshi, obviously. Yuki has Mirai Hanyu, but there's no way she can take on all the Akeboshi players. But I heard that Hikari Tendo joined their team. Hikari Tendo from Chikusa Middle School. Oh, she's from the team that beat our middle school team, right? But still, Akeboshi's offense is fierce. You remember from when we went up against them last year, right? I guess. We never know. Hakura? I think Yuki has a pretty good chance. You never have much of an opinion when it comes to other teams. Why do you think that? Last year we were famous as the team most likely to win the competition. But there were two times we were seriously threatened. The person responsible goes to Yuki. Wow. I never imagined there was anybody you felt threatened by. I'd like to meet this player. Player. Would it be the right name? But I'd sincerely wish we had this person's support. Let's do our best. After the players of both teams greeted each other, Hikari and the others excitedly got into position. The team hadn't improved at all. There was no hope for a victory. They're gonna lose for sure. As I had expected, the game was in favor of the other team. They targeted our strong players, Hikari and the captain, and worked together to block their every move. Akeboshi knew what they were doing. They were fully aware that we were no threat as long as Hikari and the captain were out of the way. On top of that, 
Akeboshi had amazing offense skills, and they were using them to the fullest. All of Akeboshi's players have a strong build, and they're the most aggressive players. If the game was based on just offense, they would probably even beat Tenno Academy. Their playstyle is so aggressive, once they get into the zone, they could probably go against national top teams. And right now, the Akeboshi girls team had turned their switch on, and was destroying our team. I can't believe this. We can't even lift a finger to them! There's no way we can win this game! Hmm. They've given up. I guess it can't be helped when the difference of ability is rubbed into their faces like that. However, I wish they could see how that's not exactly the problem for them. Yoshi... Hikari? Please, Yoshi. We need your help. If we keep going at it like this, we will lose! Hikari, I'm sorry. I can't... Believe me, if there was anything I could do to see Hikari win, I would do it. But nothing could be done as long as the other team players don't change. Why? Hey, stop it, Hikari. Why are you even asking him for? Yoshi is the one who helped us get to the national tournament when we were in middle school. What? You all treat him like he's trash, but you should know that Yoshi is the one who taught us everything. He was our coach, and he was amazing at it. Hikari? I know that. Huh? I went to go see the final game of the tournament last year. So I saw that Yoshitsune was the one in charge of your team. If so, why did you... I thought it was unfair for us to ask for his help because of how everyone had been treating him. It's not right to ask him when we haven't been giving him any support. But I'm sorry to say this, but I don't want to give up. I know it's shameless of me to ask, but please, can you help us this one time, Yoshitsune? Captain, Mirai was one of the very few people who treated me nicely. I really wanted to help, but the problem was that... Y Yoshitsune? Yes? I still can't really believe it, but if you are capable of saving us from losing this game, we'd really appreciate the help. Huh. I'm really sorry for everything we've said. What? I'm sorry too! All of the players started apologizing to me. Honestly, I wasn't expecting this outcome. Okay, I'll help you guys. If you take in what I have to say and work hard together, we might just be able to turn this game around. Yoshi! Thank you. However, I have to be honest with you. We're in a very difficult situation. To win against Akeboshi, we need to stop their aggressive teamwork and destroy their rhythm. But they're already riled up and their teamwork is better than ever! So, what can we do about it? Well, I took out my whiteboard and magnets to explain how to defend ourselves from Akeboshi's forceful attacks. It wasn't anything easy to do. But if we managed to succeed, we might be able to turn the tables on Akeboshi. And so that's it. That would really work for us? Yes, but you've got to put your all in the second set. It's going to be really tough on all of you, but we got to win this set so we can get to the final one. If you succeed, there's a high chance of winning. Okay, we promise we won't disappoint you. Let's go, guys. Okay. Okay, can the setter stay behind for a second? What, is there something else? Wait, you don't remember my name? No, I know your name. You'll just get pissed off if I dare call it. There's something I need you to do when you get out there. What? Well, every time you toss the ball, you tend to look towards where you aim. Akeboshi has caught on to that. Huh? So I'm responsible for them reading our every move? There's no point in blaming yourself right now. Okay, I guess you're right. I'll make sure to keep my eyes off my target from now on. No, I want you to use this to confuse them. You need to look in Hikari or the captain's direction when tossing the ball. But you will actually toss it to someone else. I see. I understand now. Good. Akeboshi will probably catch on fast. When they do, start looking towards your target again from time to time. Mix in some fake lines of sight, but make sure you do it to players other than Hikari and Mirai. Why? Wouldn't it be better to toss the captain? No. Akeboshi has Hikari and the captain on their radar. We need to mix it up and confuse them. As long as we can stop their moves for a second, Hikari and the captain will be unstoppable. Let's make sure we set the stage for the two strongest weapons of our team. You will be the key to our victory. I'm the key. Oh my gosh, if I mess this up... You'll be fine. I've watched you practice every day, so I know you can do it as long as you get out of your habit of looking. 
You should have more confidence in yourself. W well I didn't know you could smile like that. Oh, the game is about to start up. Don't forget the other plan I told you with the others, okay? Uh, okay. So, what Yoshi was saying was... First, I guess it was the Akeboshi coach's idea. But I've examined the attackers, and all of them are rapacious and extremely hot-headed players. When they're doing well, they're undefeatable. However, they tend to depend on their strength and force, so their moves are easy to read. And if you can get them irritated, they will soon lose control of their shots and start making mistakes. You need to get in there and block their moves. This player is good at cross-court shots, so we need to get in and block it. <gasps> good! She's aiming straight! Akeboshi's really good. If they see you blocking their planned attack, they'll change the course of their shots. However, they depend on their strength when they're attacking, so to avoid making mistakes by changing their shot, they usually pick shots in spots that will be easier for us to receive. That's where the libero should come in. Okay, here goes. I'm supposed to look at Hikari or the captain. Wait, how do I decide which one to look at? Here, I'm ready. Yeah. What? Shoot! We got tricked! Yeah! Using Hikari as a decoy worked out just as I had planned. The setter seemed to be confused for a second there, but Hikari jumped in and called out, letting her know which to use as a decoy. We had used this plan many times in middle school. Hikari probably knew what was going on. Yoshitsune! Yes? We did it! That was an amazing play, guys! But it's too early to celebrate. We're only leading by one point. I know. Just one little point. However, this one little point changed the course of the game 180 degrees. Both teams were adding to their scores, but our team had more total points. We were leading. In the end, we were able to win the set, 25 to 22. Yoshi, we won the set! You've succeeded in creating a crack in their teamwork. Let's work hard to keep this up. And now we can start using Hikari and the captain more. Okay, we got this. We just gotta keep it up, right? Yes, but don't forget to continue using the decoy plan. That way, other members will be able to contribute to the game. Gotcha! Oh, and when you reach the match point, our team was on the right course and they were feeling confident. I could see that Akeboshi's players were feeling extremely frustrated. They were making many mistakes, and now there was a big chance that we could win this match. However, I gave one last piece of advice, just to be sure. Uh, what? Seriously? We've only tried that a few times during practice! You'll be okay. If you succeeded during practice, you'll be able to pull it off now. It's best to use this now. The element of surprise will do good they'll be caught off guard. Okay, I'll do it. The final set had started, and Akeboshi had already gotten back their confidence. I wouldn't expect less from the top players of this area. The final set seemed no different than the second. Each team was steadily gaining points. However, our team reached match point first. Hey, make sure to cover Hanyu and Tendo, uh-huh? This is our victory shot! I knew Meisei would expect Hikari or the captain to make the last shot of the game. They never expected another player to take the attacking shot, so the ball fell right through the players into their side of the court. We... we won! I can't believe this! We really won against Agaboshi! Yoshitsune, did you see that? Yes, I'm glad we won. It was true when you said we would definitely win if we get to the final set. No, that's never true when it comes to games. What? But you said... If they thought they could definitely win by getting to the final set, they would all work their hardest to win the second set. By the time they got to the final set, they would be confident enough to play aggressively since they thought victory was near. It was my way of encouraging confidence in you all. Playing sports is mostly about having the right mindset. Oh... Still, I'm really glad we won. Yoshitsune! Captain, good job out there. We did it! And it's all thanks to you, Yoshitsune! Really? How can we thank you? Hey! You're smothering me! No! Yoshi, you look so happy! Huh? No, wait! You're angry at me?! Gosh, please let go of him already! Hey, don't be so anal! We just won the match! No, that's a different issue! We needed to pack our things and leave, but for some reason, they were all fighting over me! 
In the end, Hikari didn't let go, and she won. But this match was the start of my harem life with the volleyball players. It caused Hikaru to get grumpy and pouty, but I'll save that episode for a different day. As of now, I desperately need to get out of this embarrassing situation as soon as possible. While I was riding the train one day, she's wearing our school uniform, but I've never seen her before. She looks a little sick. I wonder if she's okay. Um, you're looking a little pale. Are you alright? I'm okay. It's just, I haven't been feeling well since I woke up this morning. You need to rest. Here, you can use my seat. No, no. You'll have to stand up then. Oh, I know. Uh... Mm. Okay, this... this is wrong. This is not what I meant at all. Um, isn't this a little inappropriate? Huh? What are you talking about? Why are you on my lap? This way we can both sit, right? Well, I guess she has a point. We finally arrived at our station. Are you okay now? Yes, you really helped me out. Thank you so much. Whoa, she's a little strange, but she's so beautiful. Totally my type. Um, I feel bad for asking you this after what you did for me, but can you show me how to get to school? Huh? Aren't you a student from Yuki Academy? Well, I just transferred today. Oh, I'm a junior. My name is Yumino Kuroki. I'm a junior too. The name's Yuichi Amano. Would you like to go together? I would really appreciate it. So, Yumino... Yes, Yuichi? Why is your arm hanging onto mine? Um, is it uncomfortable? No, it's not that. I was just wondering why... I'm still feeling a little under the weather. I guess it can't be helped then. We're here, Yumino. Yay! Thank you so much. I don't know how to thank you, Yuichi. No, it's really nothing. Huh? Why is this girl in my arms right now? So that's how Yumino and I ended up getting to school together yesterday. Gah! This is outrageous! I'm so jealous of you! Is it really that big of a deal? It's the biggest deal! You came to school together with a transfer student who had become the IT girl of Yuki Academy! This can't be happening in the real world! These things only happen in dating sim games! <laughs> well, it did really happen. He's a friend of mine. His name is Tomonori Kimura. He's my one and only friend, and he's a professional dating simulation gamer. He's dated over a thousand girls. Obviously only in games. On top of that, you were obviously vibing with Yumin right from the start! Oh, come on, that's not true. I'm the same as you, Tomonori. I'm just a loser. Don't you dare say you are the same as me, you traitor! I am a way better loser than you! Traitor? I was just being nice to her because she was feeling sick. And so our conversation continued until... Oh, there you are, Yuichi! Huh? Yumino? <gasps> SSS rare gorgeous girl has just appeared! I wanted to thank you again for what you did yesterday. Oh no, it's... Are you feeling any better? Yes, thanks to you. I'm glad to hear that. <clears throat> How dare he deny it! They're totally vibing! Um, here. This is for you. I made you a lunch as a token of my appreciation. Oh, are you serious? Yes. I tried to put in all of your favorite foods. Wait, I don't recall talking about my favorite foods yesterday. Oh, um, hey, don't worry about unnecessary things. Wait, wait, wait a minute! Huh? What's wrong with you? Nothing is wrong with me. You just need to come here. It's urgent. Yuichi, don't you feel it's strange? Strange? What is? Not only did she sit on your lap on the train, she held your hand and had you hold her like a princess on your way to school. The biggest sign is that she made you a handmade lunch with your favorite foods. Don't you see it? Yeah, she's a little strange, but she's really nice. Maybe she can just sense people's favorite things? 
Oh, you are just so numb at it! It's irritating! How can you not notice how intense this all is? Intense? You're blowing things way out of proportion. What are you trying to say? Listen here, Yuichi. Think about this one more time. I get it. She's psychic. Ah! You are so frustrating sometimes! I don't get what you're trying to say. What is it? Get to the point. See, Yuichi, Yumeno is... Um, sorry to interrupt, but... How did you get behind my back? Do you mind if I borrow Yuichi for a minute? No way! Yuichi is my only friend in real life! No, he's my best friend! I cannot just sit back and watch this tragedy happen to him! Huh? I thought you said I was a traitor like five minutes ago. Ah! You need to sense when to keep your mouth shut! Uh, what? You, what is your purpose? What are you planning to do with Yuichi? My purpose? Do I need a purpose? Do not play dumb with me! I know what you are! I see right through you! Uh, I guess you're just really sensitive to these kinds of things. <laughs> you can tell Yuichi about what I really am. But, be sure you're prepared for your secret to come out too. My secret? I have no secrets. What about that thing you keep in the back of your closet, Mr. Tomonori Kimura, dating sim pro? This girl? Why does she know my name? No, the question should be why does she know about the thing in my closet? The thing in your cookie tin box. You want everyone to know what's in there? Oh! <gasps> you! How do you know about that? I guess we can now agree that we should start being nice to each other. <laughs> I am the undefeated champion of dating simulation games. I have a thousand heroines at my beck and call. Your threats mean nothing to me. Just kidding. I'm just messing with you. Don't get so emotional, please. Uh. Anyways, please excuse us. I just need to talk to Yuichi for a little while. Uh, wait! Sorry, Tomonori. I'll be right back after we talk. Uh, stop right there! Yuichi! She's a yandere. She loves so hard she'll go through all sorts of extremes to keep him by her side. Yumeno and I went to the rooftop to eat lunch together. Everything in the lunchbox was delicious. It was really surprising to see that all my favorite foods were in fact included in there. Her selection of food and the taste of everything was just amazing. I was impressed. You know, the rooftop is usually locked. I wonder why the door opened today. Maybe one of the teachers forgot to lock it after coming up here? Or maybe it's God's message that we are meant to be together. God's message? Oh, it's nothing. Please ignore it. I'm just glad we're alone. So, you may know. Yes, what is it, Yuichi? Uh, well, what was the thing you needed to talk to me about? Oh, that. Well, actually, I wanted to ask you a favor. Well, I'm having trouble with guys surrounding me ever since I came to school yesterday. They want to know my number. They want to date me. It's all so overwhelming. Well, that's probably because you have a very pretty face. Oh, <laughs> you think I'm pretty? Oh, uh, well, I'm not trying to imply anything. <laughs> You see, I really don't want any of the guys hitting on me. I just want one guy, a boyfriend, who I can be with at all times. Oh yeah? Yes, I'm hoping somebody that would let me sit on his lap on the train, or hold my hands with, or maybe link arms. Also, maybe hold me like a princess, if anybody that sweet comes along. That's a very specific description. Are you saying that someone is me? How did you know? Well, you basically said everything I did yesterday. I know I'm not that perceptive, but you made it pretty obvious. Okay, I'm just half kidding with you. So you're half serious about it? Would you like to go on a date with me on Saturday? I want to get to know you better. I don't know what she sees, but I'm going out on a date with this gorgeous girl on Saturday. 
I told Tomonori, and he desperately tried to convince me not to. But since I had already promised her, the date happened as planned. I'm sorry for making you wait so long. I was stuck on the train I was riding. Oh, it's okay. I just got here. Don't worry about it. Wait, I thought I saw Yumino at the cafe across the street earlier. Anyways, Yumino, you look really pretty today. That's because I chose this based off of what you tend to like on girls. Huh? What I like? When have I ever told you about what kind of clothes I like on girls? Hey, don't worry about it. Shall we get going then? We decided to watch a movie first. You want to watch this? This is the movie I've been wanting to watch for a while now. Oh, wow. What a coincidence, huh? I wanted to watch this too. We seem to have a lot in common. Does this mean she could be my soulmate? A little bit into the movie, her hand has been touching mine for a while now. My heart's racing. I can't focus on the movie. I wonder, does she do this to anybody? I really hope she only does this to me. That was an amazing movie. I got so moved at that part I started crying. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I could never tell her that I was so focused on our hands touching. I wasn't watching the movie. After the movie, we headed to a nice cafe. I'll have an iced coffee and an iced tea for her, please. I'll have them ready for you soon. Do you want any liquid sweetener? I don't need any, but he always gets two. And can we have milk for his coffee too? Hmm, they're such a cute couple. They've probably been together for at least six months, maybe? How did you know how I like my coffee? This is the first time we've been to a cafe together. That's because I strive to learn about everything you like, Yuichi. Huh? This is their first date ever? How did she know? Um, you stopped moving. Are you just going to stand there? Oh, excuse me. I'll be right back with your drinks. Oh my gosh, she freaks me out. She seemed a little uncomfortable. It's probably because you have such handsome features. <laughs> I know I'm not that good looking. After that, we found out we really do have a lot in common. We really hit it off. It was the first time that I had met somebody with the exact same ideas. I really had a great time. On our way home... So, did you enjoy our date today? I had a lot of fun, you may know. I really didn't expect us to have so much in common. It's amazing! That makes me happy. I'm glad I got to know so much more about you too, Yuichi. But at the same time, it made me want to learn so much more about you. If you're up for it, you can come over to my place after this. It's pretty close from here. Huh? But I mean, it's so sudden. I think my mom's home. She would love to meet you. Or would meeting her make you too nervous? Uh, no. That's not what was going through my head. <laughs> it was all so sudden, but we ended up heading towards her house anyways. Is it okay for me to come in? Yes, of course. Wow, you guys sure have a lot of door locks. It's for security. Oh wait, your mother isn't home yet? Um, I totally forgot that I live by myself. I just moved here because I transferred. <laughs> How could that slip your mind? <laughs> I'm such a goofball, I guess. But being alone behind closed doors is kind of... It would mean a lot if you stayed for dinner. I get kind of lonely every day. I see. Then I guess I should stay to keep you company. Anybody could get lonely living all alone at this age. Maybe she feels a lot more alone than I had thought. I'm sorry, I got all sweaty earlier. Can I go take a shower? Uh, yeah, sure. Do you promise you won't take a peek? Of, of course. I waited in the living room while Yumino went to take a shower. Uh-oh, I'm so nervous. I feel like I need to pee. She's still in the shower, so I guess I'll just go without asking her. Ah, I really needed that. Huh? I don't think that room was open before. I wonder what's in it. I got curious, so I went near and peeked in. What the heck is all this? There are pictures of me all over the place. 
These are all pictures taken without my consent! There are pictures from months ago, but Yumino only transferred like a week ago, right? I can't... I don't understand what's going on! Oh no, you found my pictures? Uh, Yumino? I was waiting for you to peek at me showering. I can't believe you found my secret room first. No, you've got it wrong. I just went to the bathroom and the door was open when I passed by and... I'm so sorry. Huh? I have a strange habit of taking pictures of the guys I have crushes on. I apologize if it made you feel uncomfortable. Oh, um, no. It's okay. I'm sorry for suspecting you. I thought you were a stalker or something. I should have known you wouldn't do things like that. I would have been shocked if you had thought of me like that. But still, I really, really like you, Yuichi. But since when have you liked me? Last fall, I think. It felt like destiny brought us together. It was a cold day. You looked at me and smiled warmly, and opened your mouth to say... Would you like a packet of tissues? Oh, thank you so much. That was the moment I knew we were meant to be together. I did have a part-time job handing out packets of tissues. I didn't know we had met then. But I know. I tend to go a little over the top. Once I fall in love, everything else doesn't matter anymore. I looked you up, found out everything about you, and ended up transferring to your school. Does it creep you out that I went this far to meet you? Honestly, I'm amazed. Thank you for loving me so much. I'm touched. I've never had anybody care for me the way you do. Yuichi... Will you be my girlfriend, Yumino? Yes, of course! I will love you till the day I die! And then we went to eat dinner together. Uh... Do you think it's too early to kiss her? <laughs> um... Well... Okay... I'm happy for you then. But still, I don't feel confident about this. Yumino is so pretty, she's loving and caring. Do I really deserve a perfect girl like her? It's the other way. That woman does not deserve your love, Yuichi. Huh? Why? How can you not see it? It's so frustrating. Let me tell you, she is... Well, hello there, Tomonori. <laughs> hey, I'm not a ghost. You don't have to freak out so much, Tomonori. Wow, another coincidence brings us together, Yumino. I know! What are the chances of meeting you here, Yuichi? It's like God wants us to be together! Coincidence, my ass! Come on, Yuichi, come to your senses! Hey, do you want to go somewhere with me? You finished talking to Tomonori, right? I guess so. Sorry, Tomonori. I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, hold, on, hold on a second! You promised you would spend the day with- Tomonori Kimura. Do you want your secrets to come out? <coughs> Let's keep the worms in the can for now, so we can both live in peace. <laughs> She's terrifying. People say humans are the most dangerous existence. They're definitely talking about her. Yuichi, you should take real good care of your girlfriend. Huh? Uh-huh. Alright, Yumino. You ready to go? There's actually a place I wanted to take you. Yep. I will go anywhere with you, Yuichi. <laughs> I promised myself to treat Yumino with love and respect, exactly as Tomonori told me to. However, little did I know that I would soon find out the true meaning of Tomonori's words. Hey, Shingo. Why don't you come tomorrow for a change? I got something interesting to show you. I was at home reading a comic when I got a call from my buddy Haruki, who asked me to come over. But to go to your place... Come on, it's not a problem. You don't have school tomorrow. You got time, right? See you then. Hey, wait! Great. He says what he wants and just hangs up. He's always like this. He just relays his intentions and never cares to listen to what I gotta say. Does he have any idea what it means to have me over to his place? I mean... That place! The next day, 
I headed over to Haruki's place even though it was a Sunday and my day off. Yes, who's there? The woman's voice coming through the intercom was cold and unwelcoming. Hearing that voice, I suddenly froze. Oh shoot, why did she have to answer? That aloof sounding voice was none other than Fubuki Hinekawa. She's the school's most attractive girl, but because of her cool demeanor and her name, which means blizzard, people call her the Frigid Queen. She's Haruki's younger sister. And one of the reasons why I was hesitant about coming here is because I wanted to avoid bumping into her. Um, hey, how are you, Fubuki? This is Shingo, do you remember me? Is that you, Kiriyama? Who are you? Hmm, her voice seems a bit strange. And I seem to hear some sort of pitter-patter noise. I'm so sorry to keep you waiting, Kiriyama. As soon as the door opened, standing before me was the super cute girl. It was the girl on the intercom, Fubuki. But she seemed to be different from the girl I'd often seen at school. She sure didn't look like the girl who would cold-heartedly reject some guy's friendly invitation. Why are you here at my place today? Um, I was invited by Haruki to come over. Huh? My brother has been out since morning. What? At first, I was a bit taken aback by Fubuki's reply, but it seems he invited me over and promptly took off. The next time I meet that guy, I'm gonna... Oh, okay. In that case, if he's not here, I'm gonna head back. I really didn't want to stay here with Fubuki much longer, but then... No, please don't go! What? For some reason, she suddenly hugged me! I'm sure he'll be back soon. Why don't you come in and wait for him? But he's out, right? He won't be back for a while. No worries, he'll be back before 6 p.m., I'm sure. Can't really see why that's okay. I mean, it's noon now, so she wants me to wait like six hours? Hey, well, that seems a bit... I'm gonna pass. You probably don't want me hanging around anyway, right? No way! In fact, it would be a pleasure! What? Her reply made me choke on my words a bit. But really, I should... No, please. What? Man, she's so cute. Wait one second. Who is this exactly? Is this really Fubuki? I was completely dumbfounded by her change. She's nothing like I remembered her. But... Um... Alright then. I just couldn't resist those upturned eyes and simply accepted her offer. Okay then, please. What? I was led into her house and the place smelled wonderful, like a soothing aroma of a young girl's room. The room was all in pink and very tastefully arranged. Ah, very nice. This is your room, right, Fubuki? Uh, what was that sound? Did she just lock the door? <laughs> um... Fubuki? Are you... The vibes were getting a bit intense. I... I... I just can't resist any longer! Mr. Kiriyama! What? What the... Ow! Oh, Kiriyama... Fubuki, what are you doing? I'm sorry, but... I gotta get her off me somehow! But as I was getting ready to push back, she fell right onto me! I... I just could not take it any longer. Can't take it any longer? And then... <laughs> oh, Kiriyama... For some reason, she began to hug me tightly and rubbed her cheeks against mine. And the tone of her voice... Sweet sounding... She's definitely not in her right mind. Hey, come on, Fubuki! I always wanted to do this. Your smell... It's so wonderful. Please, get away from me! <sighs> I instinctively pushed her away because I was really embarrassed. I realize I somewhat... No, really regret pushing her away, but... <sighs> I'm really sorry. It was all so sudden, you know? You're saying if it's not sudden, it's okay? That's not the issue. <sighs> Hope I wasn't too hard on you. 
Maybe I was a bit too harsh, I suppose. It's not that I dislike her or anything. I used to see her as a younger sister, so it wasn't my intention to make her feel sad. And besides, there are things that you have to talk through, or just won't understand. Let's have a normal conversation, should we- You're not angry with me? No way! I was just a bit overwhelmed. Anyways, it must be like four years since I last talked to you. Kinda wanted to have a plain old conversation. Carry on, son. I've known Fubuki since elementary school through my relationship with her brother, Haruki. I remember the three of us always playing together. Ready or not, here I come! Once we got into junior high, she seems to avoid me. And it was not until today that she really talked. I heard rumors that she became sort of standoffish, and she had become a different person. But talking to her, I felt she was her old self. The kid I knew way back when. So this is a chance to make amends. I mean, let's put aside what happened earlier. So, like this, we got to talking. Reminiscing of old times. Bunny. Yeah, I remember that. Haruki and I would always get into some sort of mischief. It's been a while since we talked, and she's so cute. Gotta say, it was an absolute joy talking with her. I couldn't believe anybody would call this cute and kind girl the Frigid Queen. Guess it was just gossip as usual. That's what I was thinking at the moment. I'm home! Hey Shingo, you here? Not sure how long we were talking, but... As we were talking, Haruki came home. By the happy tone in his voice, I bet he has no guilt about being late. I'm gonna say hello. Hey, Fubuki! As I was about to go talk with Haruki, I happened to turn and catch Fubuki sitting there looking a bit odd. I turned to console her. My brother is home. Let's go, Kiriyama. Huh? Yeah, right. Okay. Hey, Shingo. Were you up in Fubuki's room? Hey, man. You were the one who called me over today, you know? Haruki? I don't know what you mean. I had Mr. Kiriyama waiting your room all afternoon. What? Was that cold-toned voice I just heard... Was that really you, Fubuki? I can't believe you would call your friend and then simply go out and play. Can't believe the audacity of your actions. Yeah, sorry about that. Got an urgent call and had to go out, okay? Yeah, so why not just contact me? I mean, you went out for fun, right? That was what I actually wanted to say, but I couldn't get a word in edgewise because of Fubuki's intensity. Could you finish up whatever you two are discussing and have Kiriyama leave, please? When there are people other than family here, I can't concentrate on my studies. Huh? The cute and considerate girl I was just talking to made a complete 180! I am going to return to my room. And with that, Fubuki returns to her room. I was so taken aback that I can't even remember what it was that Haruki and I discussed. Hey! So at school, I was intending to talk to her, but... Huh? Fubuki? Would you please not speak to me in such an over-friendly tone? Who are you, anyway? Uh, I... If there's nothing else, I have to get going. Excuse me. With that, she just... simply ignored me. Huh. Why was it just ignored as if she didn't even know me? Was that incident at Haruki's house just a figment of my imagination? Her indifferent attitude and 180 degree change forced me to check my own sanity. With that thought, I decided not to approach her again. The weather forecast didn't say anything about rain for God's sake! I didn't have an umbrella that day so I rushed through the rain to get home. When I got home, someone was standing outside my house. It was someone I totally did not expect. Fubuki? No, uh, Kiriyama. When I called out, and unlike school, Fubuki approached me. What are you doing here? Besides, it's raining! Uh, I just wanted to apologize to you for what happened at school. I acknowledged what her reasons were for stopping by. I couldn't just leave her like that all wet and shivering, so I decided to invite her in. You better get inside. You'll catch a cold. No, oh, thank you. I was afraid she might get a cold, so I had her take a shower. Kiriyama, sorry it took so long. All done, huh? Okay. I'm gonna take one too. What? 
What's with that skimpy bath towel? Seeing her with that towel, I unintentionally blurted those words out. Uh, my clothes were... Oh yeah, right. I'll get some clothes. Wonder if I have the right size. My dad's working overseas at the moment, and my mom is with him too, so we don't have any women's clothing. My clothes would not fit properly, of course. Okay, then. Can I borrow your school shirt? What? I think I would fit into that, no problem. Oh, well... Then, do you want me to remain in this skimpy little towel? If that is your desire, I will. Sorry, I'm on my way. I was a bit reluctant to have her wear a man's shirt, but... I couldn't have her sitting there with that tiny towel. After giving her the shirt, I took a shower myself. After a while, we sat in my room, talking. You were saying earlier about that incident at school. Are you going to explain why you acted that way? I'm sorry I took such a cold attitude. So I'm guessing there's a reason. The girl sitting next to me and the girl I saw at school are two completely different people. There has to be some reason for her to act that way. Like having a dual personality? That was well... I was covering up my embarrassment. What? Yes, covering up my embarrassment. Huh? You were just covering up your embarrassment? That's right. Do you get that cold-hearted when you're embarrassed? What do you mean? I can't help it. When I'm with you, I simply get so flustered. I just can't stand having you see me so shamefaced. If I don't do that, I would just break down. That's why I take such an attitude. God, why did I waste so much time worrying about nothing? She's so cute, but she definitely has personality problems. She doesn't want me to see her embarrassed, so she's cold-hearted towards me? Wait a minute. After some thought, what is she really implying? Are you implying that you have a crush on me? Yes. Ever since elementary school, I've had an affection for you. What's going on? The cutest girl in school? A girl that everyone calls the Frigid Queen? Has always had a crush on me? No way! Wait, wait just a second. Wait a sec. This is not happening. <sighs> Why do you say that? Even if what you say is true, you've always avoided me during junior high and... <sighs> that was because I was too shy to talk to you. So all I could do was observe you from afar and even in high school, I took pictures from a distance. <laughs> what did you just... It's nothing. You just uttered something inconceivable. Were you really snapping photos of me? No. You must have heard wrong. Hello? Haruki? There's something I want to ask you. <laughs> Please don't call me brother. She tried to grab at my phone, but I brushed her aside and got the whole story from Haruki. So you knew all along and hid it from me, is that right? <laughs> Come on, don't go accusing me of some sort of heinous crime. I just helped so my sister wouldn't go off the deep end. Haruki apparently knew that Fubuki had a crush on me since elementary school. He also apparently knew that she was watching and photographing me from afar. Guess he figured it was going a bit too far and decided to ambush me by inviting me over that day. <sighs> I guess it was all true, huh? Whoa! While I was talking and watching her puff up her cheeks, I was suddenly pushed onto the bed. Fubuki, how could you? <laughs> How could you call me brother and check up on me? I'm sorry. It's not that I wanted to make fun of you or anything. It's just that I needed to know. <sighs> My foolishness. Your foolishness? Well, I guess, but it was not only that. I just wanted to know your true feelings. <laughs> what you did was foolish, and I was disappointed at times, but... How can you say such a... I'm not making fun of you, I was just kind of disappointed. But I thought it was sort of cute. You thought I was cute? When you pushed me down, I got excited to be honest. I even thought you were cute when you seemed hesitant and confused. So much so that I couldn't get you out of my head. Does that mean... That's right. I also have a crush on you. So, do you think we could have a relationship? Are you okay with me? 
I would prefer that it be you, Fubuki. Uh, yes, for sure. I would be happy to. Make me your study. With that, Fubuki jumped into my arms with her face glowing with joy. That is how I ended up falling for this girl who attacked me, my best friend's little sister. She only acts shy and helpless in front of me. This romantic relationship starts here, but that's another story. Just holding and caressing her was enough for me. When Fubuki treated me cold-heartedly, back then when she first confessed her feelings, was so I wouldn't have any regrets. She didn't want to block someone else's affection, as she already had feelings for me. She's a bit awkward in her ways, but I can't get enough of her! One day, as the sun was setting, I stopped by a park. Oh no, I'm gonna get wet! Jimiko, let me borrow that umbrella. Yeah, we're friends, so you'll let us, right? After they said that, they took the Jimiko girl's umbrella away from her. She's actually my classmate and... I think her name was... Kagurazaka? That's horrible, them taking your umbrella. What? Oh, sorry for scaring you. Do you recognize me? I'm your classmate, Ishizuka. You're Kagurazaka, right? She seemed nervous, but she nodded. It'd be sad if I just left her here. Um, my house is nearby. You wanna come? She lightly nodded again. I'm home! Sis, are you home? Welcome home, Tadashi. Who is this? Um, I met her at the park. She's my classmate, Kagurazaka. Oh, is she your... No, she's just a classmate. She's Kagurazaka. Kagurazaka-chan, right? I'm Tadashi's sister, Rin. Nice to meet you. She's gonna catch a cold like this, so can you let her borrow some of your clothes? You're so unthoughtful. Let her take a bath first. I already have one ready. Yeah, you're right. Kagurazaka, you should take a bath. Okay. You can choose any clothes and underwear. Underwear too. Why are you repeating that? Whatever. We're just gonna borrow something. Okay, I'm gonna leave you for work so you two have fun. Bye! I handed my sister's clothes to Kagurazaka, whose clothes were soaking wet. Then I took her to the bathtub. Let me know when you're finished. That... What? Oh, me? Are you worried because my clothes are wet too? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Do you want to go in together? Yes. Just kidding. What? I borrowed my sister's swimsuit without asking. She said we could use anything, so... What's wrong? Can you not wash yourself? I guess I have to help you then. I'll wash your hair for you, but wash your own body at least. You have so much hair. You won't go bald for sure. Yeah. Why am I drying her hair? I feel like I'm taking care of a dog. You're actually really pretty, you know. The uh, that was just something I felt. No deep meaning to it. Thank you. Uh, no, that's not what I... Were you able to make a call? Is someone gonna pick you up? Yes. Do you want to read some manga while you wait? Manga? Wow. <laughs> are you surprised? These are my manga that I bought with the money that I saved up. Wow! You can read whatever you like. What? You've never read manga before? Yeah. I didn't know there was anybody in the world who's never read manga before. I recommend this one. Kanon's Love Story Manga. Love Story Manga? Maybe her family is poor, so they can't afford to buy her any manga. <sighs> wow, she's already so focused. It's crazy how she can be so amazed by manga. This situation is actually pretty uncomfortable. I guess the only people who come in and out of this room are my sister and my mom. Oh. Hmm? What's wrong? You finished the first book already? Yeah. Here's the second one. <laughs> you like that one that much? Yes. Then you can borrow it. My parents are strict. Really? Your parents don't allow manga? Yeah. Then you can come by here after school to read it whenever you want. I mean, if you want to, that is. Thank you. 
No, I mean like, just trying to be nice to my classmate. Don't misunderstand anything. Misunderstand? I mean... <laughs> Why am I acting different? I thought she's a very introverted girl, but she's actually very expressive. Fifteen minutes later... I have come to get you, my lady. A butler?! Does that mean... Her family is super rich?! You must be Ishizuka Tadashi. Thank you so much for saving my lady today. I didn't do much! This is just a small sign of our gratitude. Money?! I can't take this! Why? What's wrong? Is it not enough? You don't need anything in return? She was all wet, and I couldn't just leave her. I don't need anything in return. You're quite a gentleman. But the Kagurazaka family can't just leave it at that. How about... allowing me to bring her to my house sometime? That is... Don't worry. I just want her to be able to read manga. Manga? Hmm... I see. Okay. My lady has lessons to go to. How about twice a week for about an hour? Is that okay? You hear that? Good, right? Yes. Hey, butler. Can I let her borrow my manga? Her parents are really strict. So in secret, please. She's Jimiko at school, but in reality, she's a pretty girl from a rich family. She probably has a hard time at school since she's not so good at communicating with others. She should always be smiling if she can make that kind of face. Tadashi, there's something I want to ask. Are you writing manga again? Yeah, I came up with something. About a girl who is ordinary and doesn't talk, but is actually a really pretty girl from a rich family. I see. By the way, why is my swimsuit out in the bathtub? Oh yeah, we used it. For what? Ever since then, I started talking to Kagurazaka more at school. Manga takes us to a place where we can't go in reality. I mean, it's just me talking to her about manga and her just listening to me. Even though reality is tough, an imaginary world gives me a lot of joy. But she still seems like she's having fun. Kagurazaka comes twice a week to my house and reads manga with me for about an hour each time. She seems so amazed when she reads manga, but when it's time for her to leave, she seems sad. It sucks to not have freedom. Is this the only thing I can do for her? A month had passed, and I decided to talk about my dream to Kagurazaka. I actually want to become a manga artist. I want to give entertainment to people. She supported me with a smile. She said she would do anything to help support my dream. So one day in my room, she dressed up and modeled as a character for me. You really okay with that outfit? Yes, if it's to help you. Oh, okay. As long as you're not embarrassed. We kept on having these calm, carefree days. But one day... Shizuka, do you like Jimiko? What? What are you guys talking about? Because weren't you bringing her to your house? What do you mean? Kagurazaka is just coming over sometimes to read manga. Whatever. You don't have to hide it like that. An otaku like you is a good match for Jimiko. These girls really don't listen. You're just Jimiko. Why are you trying to attract guys? <laughs> you should understand who you are. Hey, you guys don't know? Or are you just jealous? What? Why do we have to be jealous of Jimiko? You don't know? Kagurazaka is really, really pretty. Jimiko is pretty? That's not possible. Are you crazy? That's just something an otaku like you would think. <laughs> As they made fun of me, Kagurazaka suddenly stood up. I'm not Jimiko. Don't make fun of the Shizuka-kun. What? Uh, are you really Jimiko? She took off her glasses and stared at the girls who were giving me a hard time. What? Jimmy Kagurazaka san, you're so cute! She was actually a pretty girl! Ugh, these guys are annoying. Let's go! Seems like she can show an angry face, too. She was able to get out of being called Jimiko, I guess. I noticed it all along. Lies! 
Don't act like you're the only one that knew. Hmm? What's wrong? Um... Oh. Were you embarrassed showing your real face to the girls? Yeah. You did good. You need to be more confident. You're a pretty girl. I know. My sister will come in handy at times like this. Riko-chan is so cute! It's such a waste not to show that. Let me touch her up. That's what she said. Kagurazaka-san! You started using contacts?! Your new hairstyle looks good on you! You're actually really cute! Thanks to my sister, she transformed and became the most popular girl in school. Good for you, Kagurazaka. Those girls... I... I wanted to be born a pretty girl too! It's okay. As long as you have a good personality, guys will fall for you easily! Ah. Do these girls not know that bad rumors about them are spreading for being mean to Kagurazaka? Nobody is going to like them. You're so popular, Kagurazaka. Good for you. You even got asked out by the hot older guy, right? <sighs> What's with that face? I guess if you're from a rich family, you're not allowed to go out with anybody? No. Then you should go out with somebody. You're so popular. Why wouldn't you? I want to be with you. I see. You're a little odd. I guess it's because she wants to read manga at my house. Hey sis! I'm home! Tadashi! 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 What? What's going on? The manga you wrote! Oh, the one where Kagurazaka modeled for me? Yes! That one! It seemed interesting, so I asked my classmates to help me and try selling it as an ebook, and then this- What? Savings account? Let me see. A hundred thousand dollars?! Didn't think it would sell this much! Why are you selling the manga I wrote without asking me? Sorry, but I don't really know what to do with this, so I'll give it all to you. I don't know what to do with a hundred thousand dollars all of a sudden. How am I supposed to file taxes on this? Let's give a portion to the people who helped out. Since you're the main character, want to split the rest with me? Then this. Hmm? You want to go on an onsen trip? Yes. I guess we could easily go with this money. But your parents won't allow you, right? Uh... Seems like you guys are having a problem. Butler! Where did you come from? Don't worry, my lady. I have made a reservation and booked the bullet train for you. And don't worry about your parents. They will be out of the country during that time. You're... You're so fast at doing things! Of course. I'm a butler. I have to care for my lady. I guess it seems that way, Kagurazaka. What do you want to do? I guess with that look you want to go. Shall we go then? Yes. Kagurazaka and I left for a one-night, two-day onsen trip. You bought all the mango worth $100,000, right? I don't know what you're talking about. Don't try to act like you don't know anything. Isn't that going against your boss? As long as my lady is happy. I see. You're a pretty good guy. <laughs> hey, Kagurazaka. We're almost there. She's a lady but she falls asleep reading manga. I wish I could stay with her longer. Need to make more good memories with her. Looking at Kagurazaka while she sleeps, I started thinking about the future. I know I wouldn't be a good match with a lady like her, but at least this moment. If you want to be a jockey, you have to go to a specialized school. To get in, there are a number of exams you must pass, not only written, but also physical. If you fail to pass these, then you cannot enter. Just to get through the first phase is quite a feat, so I'm sure people understand the physical and emotional toll it takes to become a jockey. When I think back on it, I'm amazed that I was able to get in. I'm Shiro Kirishima, and that was on my mind as I stared out the window. The jockey school is located outside the city. Obviously, there's a need for adequate space. What with the horses and space needed for practice purposes. As a result, I'm not able to have a normal high school life. And in addition, it's a boarding school. Oh boy. I'm knackered. It's been two years since I started here. I tried so hard to get into the school. But with the lack of any entertainment, I was just about to break. Are you still moving around? 
As I sat there with my head down on my desk, I heard this sighing voice behind me. She had this longish light brown hair and amber colored eyes. She was a very pretty girl, but has this innocence about her. We're starting to see some female jockeys, but the school is made up mostly of guys. What's more, she's quite the looker and attracts a lot of attention from the guys. Like a chandelier in a banquet hall. I can't help it. I'm blushed. You're always like this, loafing around. You need some major motivation. Karin Tayama approaches and plops down beside me. Motivation? I'm the one riding the horse, and not the carrot leading the horse. Whoever said I would give you a prize if you try hard? I'm just saying you should be consistently motivated, that's all. She just sighed. If she's so offended, why does she stick around? I mean, this place is mostly guys, and she's a good-looking girl. She would have no problem attracting admirers. Get motivated, huh? I just can't get all pumped up. So what am I supposed to do? And you wanted to be a jockey with that attitude? Well, don't want to say it, but the main reason was money. <sighs> then just don't say it then. Or maybe if a cute girl appears and calls me Mr. Trainer. That would only happen in game. Yeah, I guess. Oh yeah, that game. Seemed kind of interesting, but I just couldn't understand the appeal. You're just not putting enough effort into it. I mean, there's no trainer character in it. And how can a horse be so cute? Stop! Don't you dare go any further! Reality is really extreme. Even if this reality is based on fact. When you get into this world, reality really hits you in the face. What's that trainer's position in the game? It's clear that he's not a jockey. Yeah, I guess. It's not some surreal image, like someone riding a girl holding a whip or something like that. Oh, maybe he's an instructor or something. I think an instructor is a little different. Oh, the teacher is here. As we talked, the teacher entered the room. Corinne immediately stopped talking and pulled her books out from under the desk. Oh, well, maybe I'll take a nap. The vocational school I go to also allows me to get credit for high school. So, I get a high school diploma, as well as becoming a professional jockey. To become a jockey, you have to live and study here. But if I opt not to live here, it's not as if I would become a junior high dropout. Which means, no boarding school will not equal game over. But how can you be so stupid to nap during classes? As we were grooming the horses, that's what she was saying. You do realize that we get up pretty early in the morning. Of course. I get up at the same time as you. That is precisely why we must adjust ourselves accordingly. Ah! Uh, help, Charlester! She's bullying me! I was so pressured by Karen that I instinctively clung to the stable horse named Charlester. I don't do much grooming, but this mane is really beautiful. I bet this horse is going to be really great one of these days. I can't believe that you wanted to be a jockey with that attitude. I hate to say it, but it's all for the moolah. You keep saying that! Another would probably be to meet a nice girl. Come on, get back to reality! You are living a fairy tale! But there may be someone like that, right? A girl who would do a winning live concert for me. You know, with the horse's ears and tail. If you don't take this seriously, people are going to turn against you. You do realize that there are people like me who are serious about becoming a jockey. Yeah, well, I want to become a jockey too. Well, it sure does not come through. You keep it up and people are going to hate you for it. I do feel that people shun me because I don't have much motivation. And that's probably why I don't have any friends. I do feel a bit apprehensive about it. I'm okay with it, because at least you're friendly to me. Yeah, well, I guess you're right, but maybe we should verify that right now. Please don't abandon me. I don't want to be by myself. Oh well, okay. For now, I will remain your friend. Thanks. Hey, 
Did you want to become a jockey because your father was also one? Yes. I have a real dream unlike you, who's living in a fantasy. My dream was to be called a trainer someday. Wonder if Charlester will see me that way one of these days. I've been working hard studying since I was a kid. Even watching my weight and diet. But regarding height, I could not control that. Yeah, me too. Before applying for the exam, I was constantly dieting. There are many who have worked their butts off, so you better get on the ball or you're gonna get scolded one of these days. Yeah, yeah. I'll get motivated one of these days. Oh boy. I'm not gonna pick up after you. Someday, when you become a famous jockey, I'll boast about being your friend. Boy... <sighs> I'm groggy. Just because the instructor is not here, that's overdoing it, Shiro. How do you manage to stay on? It seems my horse is not up to the task today. He wants me to take it slow today. Ain't that right, Charlester? Thanks for giving me a ride. With that, Charlester seems to respond with a cry. Horses really have feelings. Oh well, do as you like. With that, she took off down the track. Looking at her, she had good form. I looked around the riding field. I could see the other classmates warming up on their horses around me. There were some that were fixated on their training, and others would look over at me with what seemed like disdain. Are they just relaxing, or... Are they looking at me because I look like I'm loafing off? Well, whatever. Right, Charlester? Charlester nods and grunts as if in agreement. Now, if this was a young, cute girl, she would say something like, You're so right, Shiro! Hmm. Charlester's kinda hard to pronounce. I just realized. The distance from the school to the boarding house is pretty far, so we have to take a shuttle bus. Uh. <sighs> you seem kinda sleepy. Yeah, all the horse training. You mean playing games? Oh yeah, that reminds me. A time trial's coming up, right? Someone was talking about it this morning. That was announced last week in class. Oh boy. Better stay alert in class, or there's gonna be some misunderstanding. Not saying that my comment was the end of it all. I'm always thinking of it. The way she emphasizes always thinking concerns me. I'm not so worried that you're not paying attention all the time, but you better snap out of it or it's gonna affect your grades. What's more, horse trainers are observing these sessions too, you know? Got a tummy ache. Here are some tums to ease the pain. Oh boy. Feels like I got nowhere to escape. I'm so worried for you. Always loafing off. Wonder if you will manage to get good grades. Wow. That's weird. Worried for me? Of course I am. I'm... I mean... I mean I am best friends with you. Oh yeah? If it's possible, I would like to someday graduate with you, and race you! I didn't expect such a cute girl to say something like that to me. Listening to her, I got kinda embarrassed. No problem. I mean, I'm a hotshot jockey after all. Yeah, a hotshot at loafing off. Saying I'm a hotshot jockey makes it feel like it's all over. Joking aside, I would like to someday be in a race with you, Corinne. Yeah, right? I mean, we're both training to be jockeys, and so a race would be like two top stars racing in the Kentucky Derby. I'm just not envisioning that kind of dramatic scene. Hmm, kind of get the feeling that she's watching anime. If we do someday race against each other, I would probably win. What? I wouldn't disrespect a hotshot jockey rider like myself. Huh? Seems obvious. A loafer like you and a hard-working person like me? I would definitely come out on top! Ouch! How could you say that? If I really give you my peace of mind, I would get booed like hell! But I suppose you gotta try. I could give a good retort to her challenge, 
so I just sort of whispered, I'm a hotshot jockey after all, or something to that effect. With that, Karen seemed to smile ever so slightly. Yeah, and if as you say you were a hotshot jockey... Then what? <laughs> I'll be your girlfriend. Huh? Things turned out kind of weird. With this time trial coming up, and me saying that I'm a hotshot jockey, I kind of backed myself into a corner, and I couldn't back down. Not really sure how a hotshot jockey is supposed to be measured. So, I just left it to Corinne to decide. Boy, how did it work out this way, huh? Star? I think she's just kidding around. Her name was too long, so I decided on Star. As I thought about my predicament, I fed Star the smelly feed. I was planning on just giving it my best on that day. But if I really do well, there's a possibility of me actually dating Corinne. Well, it wouldn't be all that bad dating such a cute girl. The problem is, is she really serious? I suppose she's just kidding. Hey! A group of my classmates approached. Kinda unusual because they usually just glare at me from afar. And now they were here talking to me directly. What's up? Heard you're gonna be dating Corinne! Hmm. Guess he's partially right. Wonder where he heard this little tidbit from. No, not true. But someone heard it's true! Just a rumor. Not some game, bud. Check out the facts before confronting someone. Is this guy just spreading the rumor left and right? At that moment, Corinne's cute smile popped into my head. She seemed to be satisfied that she got me motivated. Oh boy. Thanks for putting me in this position. What is this anyway? So I just jokingly brag about being a hotshot jockey and I get this? Huh? Huh? That's my line. You, a hotshot jockey? Give me a break! This guy's usually a jerk. That's pretty disrespectful for sure. Are you sure you're gonna be able to ride to the very end? I have my doubts. Right, guys? What a bunch of jerks. Well, if that's the case, no worries about the little dweeb dating Corinne. Well, that puts us at ease. Thought we were gonna lose our princess. Sorry to bother you, loser. The group said what they wanted and just sort of walked away, somehow satisfied by the encounter. A bit irritating, to say the least. Feeling anxious, I continued feeding the animals. Oh, I see. That's why you looked a bit upset today. In the lobby, she had a look of understanding on her face. She talks like it's someone else's business, but it's all your fault! Huh? It's my way of cheering you on! So she says... With so few girls in the school, for her to explain it all in her way was excruciating. With so many guys vying for their attention, maybe she was aware that this would lead to this. Yeah, you're pretty hot-tempered when pushed. That's because I'm irritated. Of course it's not towards Corinne. It's not about wanting to go out with her or not, but when I say that much, I want to get back at them. That's for sure. Actually, I'm pretty glad just to see you like this. You know, being serious about it all. Is the way you said date just to get things rolling? How else was I going to get you motivated? I could have just ignored it all. The most important thing is whether you will get serious about it all. You don't have to put a fire under me to get me motivated. As I said over and over again. It's just insurance or you would probably just say the hell with it and walk away. Boy, how can I deny that? Well, anyways, I'm gonna do my best. I'm scheduled to do the time trial with that guy today. Oh, really? I'm looking forward to it. If I'm slower than him, boy, what a laugh that would be. Don't worry, I'll make sure to laugh out loud. The next day, the time trial started. Oh, boy, I said all that yesterday. It's starting to feel like one big hassle. What are you, daft? Corinne was looking at me like I was nuts. I was all ready to go, 
but I suddenly get this jinx-type feeling in me, and it all seems a hassle. Come on, you're here! Be a man! Yeah, right. Oh, yeah? Your horse is a starter horse like mine, right? That's what I hear. What? You don't know? It's your horse, right? You've ridden it many times. She just likes to run anyway. Why do you say that? I guess it's just intuition. Intuition? I think I'll just allow him to run away today. Really? Are you really daft? Daft, huh? Nice. You know that famous Silent Sakuza was also a starter horse, right? The jockey thought he should just let it run away. And actually won. So you can't really disregard a jockey's so-called intuition. But this is for your grades. Why would you make such a drastic tactic change at this very moment? Everything is a challenge and a calculated risk. At that moment, her name was called and she prepared to start. Don't do anything stupid and take this serious, you got it? She put one word in for good measure and headed towards the instructor. Guess she's really worried about me. Oh boy. Is she just too straight-laced? Right? Star? She nodded and he awed in approval. As usual, Corinne makes a stylish run. The trial is 2,000 meters. As mentioned earlier, her horse is a starter horse. So on the get-go, she was very slow, but Corinne guided her expertly and put her in a good position. I knew she was a good rider, but watching her today, I was surprised by how good she actually was. In the last section, she guided her horse straight down the lane without weaving which looks easy, but in fact, is pretty hard to do. There are many aspects that make a jockey great, but a race can, of course, depend on the horse. If a complete novice rides in a horse race, it would never win, right? That's what agents look for when finding a talented jockey. It's how handling that horse during a race is what matters. If you want to be part of a professional team, you must be assigned to a stable. And to get into a stable, you have to get the approval of the top instructor. Corinne has enough skill, and I believe that she would have no problem landing a great job. As I looked at her with envy, I watched her finish up her trial run. Wonder what time it was. She was top in the three-horse race, and finished the overall race with good form, so her time must have been pretty decent. Okay, so, I'm up next. Boy, I'm getting the feeling of quitting again. If I churn out a good time, I wonder if some of the girls will dance on stage with me. Guess there won't be any costume girls on stage to greet me. Hey, hey! Finally showed up, huh? As I approached the gate, the guy who made fun of me yesterday showed up. Okay, so what great time will the hotshot jockey give us today? As expected, the guy started to pester me with insults. Very annoying. No problem. Gonna churn out the best time for sure, mate. Uh, because I responded condescendingly, he frowned with irritation. If you're gonna look down on someone, be prepared for the same medicine, mate. But too cool for a guy like me, huh, Star? Need a little whipping, Star? Just kidding, Star. Give me a good show, bud. Not really something you'd say when entering the gate, but Star seemed to acknowledge my comment and nodded in recognition. With the bang of the star pistol, the horses all took off all at once. Ugh! I seemed to hear a classmate's loud shriek as we headed out of the gate. I guess it was obvious. I mean, my horse is a lowly starter horse. What's that guy's horse? From the start, I was able to lead the pack. Good job, Star. A good start. The runaway tactic was the right choice. Star seemed light on his feet. A horse's character? It's really only considered in games, but personally, I feel it's the horse's personality that means a lot. Star, you're always so laid back when we're practicing. When it's time to shine, you really go for it. So cool, mate! When riding a horse, there's the pressure of the person riding the horse, the conditions surrounding it, and so forth. Some horses like it, some don't. Get all that wind at once? No problem. Right, Star? Outside the track, I can feel the crowd growing wild, but I concentrated on the race. What is he? 
I was watching Shiro's run from the side of the track and what I honestly thought... Darn it! Now I'm super jealous! I was pretty surprised that he used the runaway tactic. But in the horse racing world, there are not many that would take it upon themselves to make personal decisions. I don't want to be disliked, and I am more versed in jockey etiquette. But he went ahead and ran the horse and it was the horse that was responsible for its care. On top of that, he ran the horse right on the edge. It's the first time he ran the horse on a track. There seemed to be no hesitancy, but more like confidence in the run. Guess Shiro is right in that it does better when running away. And his overall skill. No ordinary jockey. When I watch him riding and seriously participating in the race, all I can say is he's skilled and great at what he does. I watched his ride, and I felt other classmates probably felt the same way. This guy certainly deserves respect. I have to admit, he is really a hotshot jockey. Deep inside, I suppose, I started to look down on him. After all, I studied hard and figured I was much better. I really wanted him to get the motivation to run and I felt confident he would never surpass me. Darn it! This is infuriating! I practiced and studied so hard, but he still manages to throw it all back in my face with his obvious skill and god-given talent! Really very infuriating, but... He's so cool! Shiro reminds me of my father and when I look at him, my heart seems to almost jump out of my chest. It's throbbing so hard! <laughs> Have I always been such an immature little girl? The results showed that he won by three lanes. So, what do you think, huh? When I get the motivation, I put out outstanding results, right? After the race and in the cafeteria, I really chided Corinne about how right I was and just sort of boasted to high heavens about my talent. But she was pretty laid back about it and I felt a bit dejected because I figured she would be elated with the final outcome. Man, he was super fast! Boy, that Shiro is one skilled rider, gotta say. I wanted her to act like the other classmates and be really in awe of me. Hey, what's with the attitude? You're the one who urged me to take up the challenge. To be honest, I didn't think you had that much talent. Just a bit shocked is all. Hey, then... I was a bit taken aback that now I have to date you. <laughs> ah, yuck! Come on, Shiro! Uh, you were serious about that? Do I look like the type that would joke about something like that? That's exactly it! You don't look like you would joke around about that, so that's what scares me. So what? I always thought I looked pretty normal. I have no objections to that. I mean, just to say something like that so casually. Yeah, well, it's not that I would go out with anybody. I've known you a long time and we get along great, so I figured we would be a good match is all. She looked away slightly and said, I wanted to give you more motivation before and wanted to tell you that you had an immense talent. But I just couldn't bring myself. To be honest, just you were always so cool. There's no taking back what you say once you say it. But I feel like she was really being honest about her feelings. Darn it. This is super embarrassing. Well, I'm not saying you have to. Your feelings are more important to me. She blushed and stood up, ready to walk away. But then, I got the courage to speak up. Hey, wait up. Huh? I didn't say anything about not dating you. I also like you, and I've known you for a long time. I don't dislike your looks or personality. As I tried to come up with the right words, embarrassment and anxiety welled up inside me. Bet my face is as red as a bead. <clears throat> I would be very happy if I could date you. Actually, it's harder to find a reason not to date her. I've grown to know her well after two years at this school. So, I would like to go out with... <laughs> oh my, I didn't realize you wanted to date me so badly. What? I'm just being honest with you. And you make fun of me? Come on! I'm just kidding. <laughs> Look forward to our dates. She sounded a bit cheery. She looks super happy. Blushing a bit. So I was kind of glad I went all out and did that race. 
just hope you take your lessons more seriously in the future. <laughs> sure. I'll consider it. A year later, we were able to enter a debut race together. And eventually, got hitched. But that's another story.